we will work um, usually for one to two weeks at a time in the forest area collecting. This looks good. So let's cut it and take a look. Get some space here. Very small, narrow ring to wet your big, fat, thick ring to wet your. And then we were able to look at the scars in these fire scarred trees to get a fire history. So we put the two together to get uh, fire and climate history and see how how fire has responded to climate changes in the past. That's it. Yep. Get your GPS reading. We began to see these really large, high severity fires beginning in the 70s and 80s. Fires that were like more than 10,000, more than 20,000 acres. Then suddenly in the late 80s, we started seeing fires routinely in that kind of size range. And then since the droughts of 2000, 100,000 acre fires, 400,000 acre fires. Just last year, 500,000 acre fire. basically there. So getting hotter, getting drier, and the fires are just going right up along with that. This is outside of the norm to burn every living tree for five miles around. This is catastrophic. We're starting to see fire behaving in ways that just nobody has ever seen before. From our knowledge, with tree ring records and old historic yeah, photographs and old pioneer accounts, in these landscapes, there's just no evidence of huge fires burning big holes like that in these places anytime. I, I really doubt that this place is coming back to forest for you know many, many, many lifetimes. So if this continues for the next 20, 30, 50 years, probably could lose 50% of our forests. And when we know that we've been the cause of this, or at least a large part of the cause of this, then the responsibility, the feeling of responsibility is even greater to do something.